Here's some examples using my library, now interfacing also TouchFX. In this video, we will see how I made my libraries for the SPI display boards based on ST7735, ILI 9341 and ILI 9488 compatible with TouchFX and how you can create an STM32 project with TouchFX using my libraries. These libraries, available on my page on GitHub, can handle now both graphic methods. So, with the same library, you can create and handle a project with either TouchFX or directly writing to display through the graphics function library. Let us see the TouchFX integration I developed while we create a new STM32 project using this GUI system. A TouchFX project can start from many tools. You can create it starting from TouchFX Designer, from CubeMX, or from your IDE. As always, I start from my Cube IDE. This is it. Go to New STM32 Project and select the microcontroller you are working on. I choose an F411. Here you know you can get a description of the microcontroller you are selecting and all the documentation related. Application Nodes The Reference Manual Including the Datasheet and so on So, back to our project, click Next to give a name to the project and create it Now in CubeMX set up the project parameters. I will enable the external high speed clock, having the board and external quartz available. Set the clock speed. I will set it to 100 MHz, which is the highest speed available. I set also the external wire debug to program and debug the board. Now I go to set up the display SPI connection. I'm using an ALI 9488 board version 2.0. If you're interested about the details of the board, the performances of the library I'm using, please refer to my video related to ALI 9488 and the one about ST7735. Let me go to my page on GitHub related to this library to get all the details about the project parameters needed. I have to set up an SPI port. Enabling DMA and interrupt.
Now I define the SPIP names as requested by my library. I already set up the wiring on my breadboard, so let me move the SPI port to the pins I'm using. I have to enable the interrupt for the touch sensor. I enable four more output pins requested by the display. and the PWM pin to drive the backlight. I properly set the prescaler and the auto reload register of the timer. ARR will be set to 100 to have 100 steps between the minimum and the maximum light level. Ok, the configuration should be complete. Now I have to enable TouchFX. Go to Software Packs and select Component. And install TouchFX if it is not already available in your STM32 Cube IDE. Close the component selector and you will see the new tag Software Packs. Open it and click on TouchFX. Enabling it, you see it needs CRC. So disable TouchFX, enable CRC and get back. Now enabling TouchFX, there are no more warnings. Here I have to declare the display size. I set it in vertical orientation. We have to define the color format used. And you can see that TouchFX cannot handle RGB666. So the board version 1 cannot work with TouchFX. Again, for more information, please refer to my previous video on ILI 9488. Set up the partial display buffer and leave a proposed configuration. CubeMX propose three buffers. Each one is sized for three pixel rows or columns, referring to the larger one. Save the configuration and generate the files. Ok, let's start adding the library. We need just the main files driving the display and the touch sensor. Add the proper include in the main.h file.
go to the display.h file and the touch.h file to set up the configuration. Now you can see that inside the TouchFX folder there is a dot path file. Double click it and you will open the TouchFX Designer tool. TouchFX Designer is not part of the STM32 Cube IDE and you have to install it separately. Just go to st.com, search for TouchFX Designer, click on the page and get the package. Now, back to our project, when you double click the DOP path file, TouchFX Designer opens and it proposes you some examples and a brand project to start with. Examples are disabled because they were designed for a different display size, as you can see on the icons. But anyway, we will open one of them, importing it to our project. Let's choose the button test example. It is something like a hello world for TouchFX. It is for a 480 by 272 pixel display, but we will get it anyway. And that's it. You can see that it is for an horizontal oriented display, but we will set it. These are the object composing the screen. These are the images used, text and fonts. The screen is made by a background, a text background, a text and two buttons. Let's delete the background and set the position of the other objects. These are all the widgets available in TouchFX Designer. I choose a box to draw a new background. Position it and set the color. Now I move a box on the back. That's all. I deleted the original background, but the picture used for it is still in the project. It is in what TouchFX calls the assets of the project and will be loaded into the microcontroller memory even if not used. Delete the widget from the screen is not enough. We must also remove the picture from the assets. We can also run the application on a simulator. It seems working. So save the project and get back to QBD. Refresh the main project folder in order to see the new files and folder added by TouchFX. How TouchFX integrates with library. About the display, it needs available two functions. TouchFX display driver transmit active and transmit block. Transmit active is used by TouchFX to know if the communication to the display is available or busy. We already have in my library a flag indicating the status of the SPI port. So I just return the negate value of the flag because it is true when the SPA port is available and TouchFX need it true when the communication is busy.
Transmit block gives the coordinates of the area and the buffer address with the data to draw. Here also is easy to implement the feature requested by TouchFX using what already available in the library, but it needs some changes. First of all, the library buffers are not anymore used because TouchFX gives the address of one of its own buffers. That's why, enabling TouchFX, the buffer size is shortened to 1. There is also a byte Indian problem to handle. The byte order of a word or a half word transmitted of the SPI is opposed to what expected by the display controller. Until now, the byte swap order was done while filling the library buffers, as you can see here. But now we are receiving the buffer from TouchFX and we have to swap in it the byte order. That could be done in many ways. The simplest method is to move through the array, swapping even and odd bytes. But Cortex Core provides a dedicated instruction swapping by position inside a 16 or 32 bit register. And CMCs provide also a macro implementing the inline assembler for that instruction. I tested it and I saw that using the CMC's macro the loop is about 40% faster than using the normal C instruction swapping bytes in the array. So I adopted this method. There is also a third way, even faster. Transmitting data over SPI via 16 bit words, we will have the correct byte endianess. So we will have to swap between the 8 bit transmission sending, for example, one byte command and 16-bit transmission sending the data buffer. Unfortunately, the SPI control bytes has not the same format in the various STM32 microcontrollers. And uh, as I want to have uh, as much as possible a library compatible with all the STM32s, or at least uh, with all the microcontroller I'm using, I kept the byte swap loop in my library. Needing a faster data transfer, Handling a larger display, showing videos or handling animations, probably you will get better results changing transmission data sites, but I suppose that you will not use these cheap SPI displays. So that strategy appears enough for this library. Another point to adapt for TouchFX is the SPI transmission complete callback function. If TouchFX is configured for partial frame buffer, it will ask, when needed, to transmit the first frame buffer of the area to refresh. But the next buffer transmissions, until the whole area is covered, have to be started by the display handling routine through a specific TouchFX function called Display Driver Transfer Complete Callback. We will add this function call in the SPI transfer complete callback function. Integrating touch needs a different work. Inside touchfx folder target folder, the file touchcontroller.cpp implements the touch device integration. Opening it, you see the sample touch function. Here, the function comments explain that TouchFX calls this function to sample the touch device. If there is no touch, the function has to return false. True when touch is detected. And in that case, the parameters X and Y have to return the touch position. I implemented a linking function in my library, so the integration can be done Just placing here this code line. And adding an include at the top. That's all. 
after copying the library files into the project folder and handing the include into the main dot age, the integration of the graphic display is already active and the touch integration is done applying these changes into the touchcontroller.cpp file. Now we can compile the project. Here we have to remove these error lines inserted just to recall the display integration. As we already made the implementation, remove it and compile again. Oh, there is one more error. Mm, I forgot to enable the touch interrupt. I assign the interrupt handling to the pin, but I haven't enabled the interrupt on NVIC. Let me enable it and generate the new configuration. Now we can go to the main.c file, add the display init functions calls, and let the display run. But now, how TouchFX perform the display updates? When it pulls sensor, defines the screen object to change and send the data to display through the function we implemented in the library? All the main activities are done inside this function TouchFX added into the main loop. But if you go inside it, we see that it checks a flag and just exit if the flag is not set. The flag is set by the function touchfx signal vsync. Going into it, we see it performs two activities. Increase a counter that can be used in some widget controls and then just set the flag we have seen before. So, TouchFX main process is called on every main loop cycle, but only when enabled by TouchFX signal vsync start performing the display rendering and drawing. That strategy is needed directly handle displays having a higher and faster display control, and in order to avoid tearing effect, the display memory update must sync with the display refresh scan, typically 60 times per second, handling image persistence. But here we don't need this handling. The ILI display driver works for us, continuously updating the display, and we don't have to start TouchFX process 60 times per second. We need to enable it only when an event occurs an event requiring a display update. In this case, in our project, we will trigger TouchFX process when the display is touched, this way. That's why we will add TouchFX signal vsync also in the init area. We will ask TouchFX to start drawing the initial screen. Ok, that's all. Let's try to compile it and run. As you can see here, in the touch interface function, I implemented a key repeat feature. I find it useful in TouchFX project. It is controlled by a parameter to set in the touch.h file. The delay to key repeat parameter sets the time to wait detecting a touch on touchfx before activating the key repeat. If you don't like it or in the project that must not have a key repeat feature, just set the parameter to zero disabling it, as you can see now.
The test we ran just now is closed on TouchFX itself. It detects events and just changes parts of the screen consequently. This second project performs something more. Please do not comment the font style, I just wanted to show you when you can move to the display any font available on your PC. This project differs from the previous one because TouchFX changes devices outside itself. Here we simply turn on and off the user LED of the microcontroller board and here I change the PWN duty cycle related to the display backlight. Here also a key repeat feature I implemented in the library appears useful. The third project is related to an ST7731 board 160 by 128 pixels. That is not a touch display, so I just use TouchFX for drawing. Yes, it is a non touch TouchFX project. Final considerations. Get back to the second example. The project with a gauge controlling the display backlight. Structure of the program is the same as the first test. Just checking if display is touched and enabling in that case the GFX engine. But if we go to the memory occupation, we see it needs more than 300 kilobytes in the flash. Going into details, we see that close to 200 kilobytes of flash was used to store images, and within them, 100 kilobytes was used just by the gauge background image. Opening the designer, we can see the same set of images, and we see the gauge background using 100 kilobytes of flash. Now you can see that increasing the number of screen or the size of images used, you can easily run out of the flash available in your microcontroller, having to add to your system an external flash for the image storage. While prototyping, you can take advantage from some display mounting and add the flash memory, like this display from STM. There are also some boards having an additional flash mounted on, like this version of a black pill available by WeAct Studios. By the way, this video is not sponsored by anyone, I'm just showing you devices I find useful. So, now you know how to set up a project with my library and how to create a TouchFX project with it. What to do now? On the internet, there are many information sources about TouchFX. A good starting point is to go to the TouchFX support page that ST created on this address. Even if here there is a huge information about TouchFX and about display graphics, if you just want to dive into developing a TouchFX project with my library, you can directly go to the tutorials. Here you will see how to use the GFX Designer and how to use the various widgets in it. The second tutorial as example will show you how to create a project like the first test we run here, starting from a blank page. Here you can also find links to other information source, dedicated webinars, the ST YouTube channel and more. That's all. Hoping you enjoyed this video, have fun with TouchFX. See you on the next video.